Hello my dear students, today inshallah we are going to start chapter 18 which is about controlling activities and operations uh, and this will be our last chapter uh, in the syllabus. So the first question here is what is controlling and why it is important. Let's start by the definition of controlling. Controlling is one of the four management functions as we stated before. Managers has more uh, has four main functions which are planning, organizing, leading, and controlling. So this is the last uh, function of the functions of managers. So it is a management function that involves it involves three things. The first is monitoring. What are we what we are going to monitor? We are going to monitor the activities that the employees are doing and then comparing comparing what the employees are doing with the plan that we put in the planning phase so the comparison here is we are comparing the actual work of the employees with what we have written in the planning phase and then step number three is correcting the work performance if we found deviation from what we wrote in the planning phase so we are going to correct the performance in order to put the work back on track in order to make sure that the work is going towards attainment of the organizational goal so to sum up controlling is one of the management activities or the last management activity which is composed of three steps first is monitoring monitoring is looking or seeing how the employees are working then step number two is comparing comparing their actual work again against the standard that was put in the planning phase and third is correcting the work performance if we found the work performance is not according to the standard so we have to put work back on track uh, to make sure that the work is done according to uh, what is going to lead us to achievement of the goals of the organization and the second question is why is control so important uh, control is important uh, for three reasons first of all uh, planning we mean by planning that uh, at uh, the first function of managers is planning uh, we put a plan so we have to make sure that we are working according to that plan so we have to do some control we have to make sure that employees are working uh, towards uh, achievement of that plan. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, everything is going towards uh, uh, accomplishment of that plan. So we have to have controlling to make sure that each one is doing his work so that we are going to achieve our goals. So we put a plan and now we are controlling to make sure that we are doing our work according to that plan so controlling is important to make sure that you are doing your work according to the plan the second importance is that we said before that you have to uh, do what we call empowering employees empowering employees we said in Arabic it's called tamkeen al-amilin what does we mean by that giving employees the power to make decisions giving employees to, the power to do some of the work in their own way okay I'm giving my employees the power to take a decision I'm giving the employees the power to do the work in whatever way they see is right shall I leave them without control no you have to do some control you have to make sure that they took the right decision give them the power to take the decision give them the power to do their work in the way they see it is right but you have to control you have to have an eye on your employees to make sure that they are taking the right decision to make sure that they are doing their work correctly so empower your employees but at the same time have an eye on them control them the third reason is that protecting the workplace we have to have control over the physical facilities of the company we have to make control 
in order not to have theft in the company, not to have corruption in the country, uh, in the company, uh, uh, so that uh, no one uh, um, uh, take important papers, uh, no one takes the uh, uh, important things, valuable things from your company. So, in order to protect your workplace, you have to have control over the physical place of the company. We can say that the control process is a three-step process which consists of, number one, measuring actual performance. We measure the actual uh, performance of our employees inside the company. Number two, comparing the actual performance against the standard. We compare what, what our employees are doing, what is the actual importance of our uh, employees, with the standard that we put in the planning phase. And step number three, taking managerial action to correct the deviation or inadequate standards. Step number three is that we are going to take managerial action either to correct the inadequate performance if the deviation is something wrong from our employees or we sometimes correct the standard itself. Sometimes we are the ones, the managers are the ones who put too high standard that could not be achieved. So sometimes in the controlling process, when you find that people couldn't achieve the standard and you revise the standard and you find it too high standard, sometimes we go and correct the standard itself. So in the third step, when you take a managerial action, it is either to correct the deviation or to correct the inadequate standard. So in this figure, uh, we can see in the middle of the figure, in order to achieve the goals and objectives, either uh, on the organizational, uh, divisional, departmental, individual level, uh, we have to go through the three steps. Um, first, measuring the actual performance, then comparing actual performance against the standard, and step number three, taking managerial action. We have to put a plan, make sure that people are working according to the plan, to make sure that people according to the plan, so you have to do control process, which is, uh, which consists of the three steps as we said before. Uh, measure the performance, the actual performance, and compare it with the standard put in uh, the planning phase, and then take uh, managerial action. Uh, we do this in order to make sure that uh, we are going to achieve the goals and objectives at any level in the organization. Step number one uh, is measuring the actual performance. Uh, here in measuring the actual performance, we have to uh, decide on two things. First is how we measure, how we are going to measure the actual performance. For measuring the actual performance, uh, we have uh, four uh, things we can use them in order to measure the actual performance, which are personal observation, statistical report, oral report, and written report. Uh, and these uh, four uh, things, we are going to discuss them into details in the coming slide. Let's move to the next uh, thing, which is what we are going to measure. Uh, what we measure uh, is uh, more critical to the control process than how we are going to measure. Why? Because uh, when we select the wrong criteria, uh, this can create a serious problem. Besides, what is measured is often uh, determines what the employee will do. So, it is very critical to know what we are going to measure uh, in order to understand uh, then uh, how we are going to measure it. So, first decide what you are going to measure, uh, and then after knowing what exactly you are going to measure inside the organization, decide how you are going to measure it. The first source uh, of information for measuring the performance is the personal observation. Personal observation means that the manager uh, himself goes uh, by uh, goes to uh, the work area and observes the performance of the employee. Of course, every type has its benefit and drawbacks. The benefits of this type is that uh, it, uh, the manager gets first-hand knowledge. He gets uh, all the knowledge uh, by himself. He is the one who will see 
the actual performance of the employee, not wait for other one to see and come and tell him about the performance. He is the one who will get the knowledge by himself uh, about the performance of the employee. Second, information is not filtered. Information is not filtered means that he will get all the information as it is about the performance of the employees. No one else is going to tell him half of the truth or the part of the truth that he or she wants to tell him. No, he will get all the information that he sees. So no one will filter whatever he wants to filter. Third, intensive coverage of the work activities means that the manager, while observing the performance, he is going to see other activities. So uh, while uh, going to observe uh, some of the activities of the work, he will have a look on the other activities uh, for uh, in the workplace. So this, uh, what we mean by intensive coverage of the work activities, he will see other uh, areas, uh, other people doing other work. So he will cover uh, other places and other people while observing certain performance. The drawback is, is subject to personal bias. Sometimes it is subject to the manager uh, personality or the he doesn't like uh, that employee or he likes that employee that much. So it is something very uh, personal or it is sub subject to personal bias. It is sub something, something uh, subjective. Uh, also, it is time consuming. It consumes uh, a lot of time to do a personal observation and it's obtrusive. Obtrusive means that when you as an employee sees that the manager is coming to have a look on you, you are going to do your best to give him a good impression about you. Even if this is not your, your normal performance, you are going to try to impress him. You are going to show him that you are a perfect employee, even if this is not your normal conditions at work. So this is what is meant by obtrusive. You are going to try to uh, 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 appeal to him that you are a very good employee. The second uh, source of information is the statistical report, is that you are going to get statistical reports about the performance of the employees. Its uh, benefit is easy to visualize. Uh, it's very easy to see the statistical report, percentages, uh, graphs, and like that. It's something very easy for anyone to understand effective for showing relationship if you want to to know the relationship between between anything it's very uh, good way or a good source of information its drawback it's provide limited information it just give you information about the thing you asked about so here the information is very limited and it ignores subjective factors just give you information about the things you asked for but why this happened it doesn't give you the explanation for that just give you the numbers or the figures but it does not give you other subjective factors that lead to that number or figure the third source of information is the oral report oral report means that if i want to know uh, 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 the performance of the employee i can ask someone to give me oral reports about his or her performance so he he will come and tell me the performance of whoever is so and so and he will try to tell me all uh, about the performance orally the benefit of this is a fast way to get information he will tell me this so fast even through the phone allow for verbal and non-verbal feedback sometimes they give me the feedback uh, verbally through words and sometimes uh, through uh, showing me with his hands or through a uh, 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 figure through uh, whatever so it can be a verbal or non-verbal what is the drawback bar? here the information is filtered filtered means that the person who is giving me the oral report might not give me the full information he might give me half the information or part of the information according to what he wants to show me information cannot be documented sometimes they tell me some information and when I tell him you, you said so and so they come back and tell me no I didn't tell you so where is the document that he said so and so so please take care my students if anyone give you oral report you have to document the oral report anything that told anyone give you anything orally please make sure to document any oral report finally the written report if you ask about the performance of the employee, they're going to get you uh, all their performance written in a report. 
its benefit is something comprehensive it includes all the performance of the employee it is a formal way of communication between um, uh, the manager and others inside the organization and it's easily to fi file and retrieve you can put it in file and get it back whenever you want it the drawbacks but it takes more time to prepare Second step is comparing the actual performance. Uh, when we compare the actual performance, we compare it at, uh, uh, against the standard we put in the planning phase. Uh, we have to have what we call a range of variation. This is the acceptable uh, range or the acceptable parameters of variance between the actual performance with standard. Yani for example, uh, if the actual performance is uh, 20 uh, and uh, the standard was uh, 18 so we have to say the standard is 18 plus or minus 2 so uh, the acceptable range is 18 plus 2 is 20 or 18 minus 2 is 16 so a range is from 16 to 20 so if we found the actual performance from 16 to 20 this is in the acceptable range so acceptable uh, acceptable range our range of variation is the acceptable parameter of variance between the actual performance with standard Daniel Montea that we are going to accept uh, a variance between the actual performance with the standard uh, if, if we're going to uh, find the actual performance 20, it is acceptable. If it's 18, acceptable. If it's 15, no. 15 is below 16. If it's 21, no. 21 is above 20. If it is between 16 and 20, this is acceptable for us because the uh, 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 standard, it was 18 plus or minus 2. So this is what we call the range of variation. This chart shows exactly what I mean. The upper acceptable uh, limit will lower acceptable limit, and this is the standard. As I told you, uh, suppose the standard was 18, the upper acceptable limit 20, will lower acceptable limit 16. So if the uh, actual performance is between 16 and 20, we are going to accept the uh, actual performance. If it falls above the 20 or below the 16, we are not going to accept the performance. The third step is taking managerial action. We said before that uh, taking managerial action consists of either to correct the actual performance or to revise the standard. I'm going to start by correcting the actual performance. When you correct the actual performance, you're going to choose between taking immediate corrective action or basic corrective action immediate corrective action means corrective action that correct the problem at once to get performance back on track yani i'm going to correct the performance now to get work back on track so if i find someone doing his work wrong i'm going to let him do the work right i'm going to tell him that he is doing something wrong please do it in the right way this is what we call immediate corrective action right now correct what you are doing the second type is the basic corrective action basic corrective action means i'm going to look at how and why the performance deviated and i'm going to correct the source of deviation i'm going to say why this worker is not going doing his work well who give him the training and what are the motivation beyond uh, that uh, employee that make him doesn't want to do his work well and i'm going to see who gave him the training and i'm going to see the motivations that led to this and i'm going to source uh, to correct these sources so i'm going to look at how and why the performance deviated and i'm going to correct the sources of deviation so that no one will have this uh, bad performance uh, after that the second part here is revising, revising the standard sometimes we put too high or too low standard if we put too high standard that no one can achieve this is a problem if we put too low standard that no one can get the challenge uh, inside himself or herself and, and everyone can 
uh, outperformed the standard, this is also a, a problem. So, if performance consistently exceeds the goals, everyone, his or her performance is above the goal, then the manager should look at whether the goal is too easy and we have to raise the goal uh, a little bit. If I do an exam and everyone got the full mark, all the class got the full mark, so it was too easy exam. So the next time I have to make it a little bit difficult. But when I raise the goal, don't raise it too high that no one succeed. So you have to be cautious in raising the, the standard upward or downward. At the same time, managers must be cautious about revising the standard downward. If you put too high goal, a goal that is too difficult that no one can achieve and you are going to put it a little bit downward, don't put it too easy that everyone can achieve. So when you raise the standard upward or downward, be balanced. Don't put it too high or too low. Be cautious about revising it high or low. Uh, now we are moving to another question, which is what is organizational performance? The performance is the end result of an activity. Performance of anything is the result or the outcome of the activity. So the organizational performance is the accumulated result of the, all the activities of the organization. The result of the first activity plus the result of the second activity plus the result of the third activity. So it is the accumulation of all the activities of the organization result of to, resulted to the organizational performance. We measure organizational performance by two things. First, productivity. Productivity is the amount of goods or services produced over an inputs needed to produce that output. It is a ratio of input over uh, output over input. Output hail goods or services produced divided by or over an input that we used in producing that output. El productivity is integer. So it is output over input. So it is one measure of an organizational performance and productivity, it is a comparative measurement. So we measure productivity this month and the coming month and compare them with each other. We measure the, com the productivity of other co our company to productivity of another company and we compare them to, e to each other. Another measure of organizational performance, we call it organizational effectiveness. As we told you before in the first chapter, effectiveness of, is a measure of how the organizational goals uh, uh, are appropriate or are good and how well they are being met. Did we achieve the organizational goals or not? So are we, did we put good or uh, proper goals for the organization and how well did we achieve those goals? For the control, we have three types of control, feed forward, concurrent and feedback control. Feed forward control is the control that takes place before the activity is done. For example, when we are entering an aeroplane, they have to make sure that everything is functioning well before we enter the aeroplane. There is no risk that it is not functioning well while we are in the air. So this is what we call the feed forward control, control that is done before the activity is takes place before the aeroplane takes off. Concurrent control is the control that takes place while the work activity is in process. For example, while you are in the exam, we, the, the professors and the TAs comes to the exam room to monitor or to see that everything is okay inside the exam room. So we are making control while the exam is taking place. This is what we call the concurrent control. A type of the concurrent control is called management by walking around. This is a term used to describe when the management is out of the work area and he or she interacts with the employees. He has a, a direct interaction with them, looking at them, sees if they are doing their work well or not. And if anyone does uh, their work not uh, correctly, he or she tells them how to correct the work. The third type is the feedback control, and this is the most common type of control 
and this is the control that takes place after the work activity is done after you eat in the restaurant they get you the paper to ask you did you like the food did you like the service so this is a type of feedback after finishing the service they ask you about did you like the service or not or did you like our product or not this graph uh, shows you the three types of control along with the input process and output uh, of any uh, process. Uh, il il feed forward uh, control is done in the input phase which in which we anticipate the problem. We forecast uh, if there is any problem and we try to fix the problem before it occurs. The concurrent control, uh, we do it in the process um, where we correct the problem as they happen. While the process is going on, we try to uh, correct any problem uh, as long as it happens. Uh, the feedback control, uh, it, it is done on the output phase uh, where we correct the problem after they occur. Uh, here we uh, came to an end to our chapter. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and if you need any questions, you can send me via my email. Thank you.